How much money have you, Mr. Mangan? Really? No, I can't stand <laughs> it. Mr. Mangan, it all turns on your income, doesn't it? Well, if you want to know, I have no money and never had any. Ah, you mustn't tell naughty stories. I'm not telling you stories. I'm telling you the raw truth. Then what do you live on, Mr. Mangan? Travelling expenses and a trifle of commission. What more have any of us than travelling expenses for our life's journey? But you have factories and capital and things. People think I have. People think I'm an industrial Napoleon. <laughs> That's why Miss Ellie wants to marry me. I tell you, I have nothing. Do you mean that the factories are like Marcus's tigers? That they don't exist? Well, they exist all right enough, but they're not mine. They belong to syndicates and shareholders and all sorts of lazy, good-for-nothing capitalists. <laughs> I get money from such people to start the factories. I find people like Miss Dunn's father to work them and keep a tight hand so as to make them pay. Of course, I make them keep it going pretty well, but it's a dog's life and I don't own anything. Ah, but uh, but you're making a poor mouth of it to get out of marrying Ellie. I'm telling the truth about my money for the first time in my life, and it's the first time my word has ever been doubted. <laughs> oh, sad. Why don't you go in for politics, Mr. Mangan? Go in for politics? Where have you been living? I am in politics. I'm sure I beg your pardon. I've never heard of you. Well, let me tell you, Lady Utterwear, the Prime Minister of this country asked me to join the government without even going through the nonsense of an election as the dictator of a great public department. As a Conservative or a Liberal? Mm, no such nonsense. As a practical businessman. <laughs> <laughs> what are you all laughing at? Alfred, oh, you who have to get my father to do everything for you. <laughs> you who are afraid of your own work. You with whom three women have been playing cat and mouse all the evening. You must have given an immense sum to the party funds, Mr. Mangan. <laughs> Not a penny out of my own pocket. The syndicate found the money. They knew how useful I should be to them in the government. This is most interesting and unexpected, Mr. Mangan. And what have your administrative achievements been so far? Achievements? Well, I don't know what you call achievements, but I've jolly well put a stop to the games of the other fellows and the other departments. Every man of them thought he was going to save the country all by himself. Do me out of the credit, out of my chance of a title. I took good care that if they wouldn't let me do it, they shouldn't do it themselves either. I may not know anything about my own machinery, but I know how to stick a ramrod into the other fellas. <laughs> now they all look the biggest fools going. And in heaven's name, what do you look like? I look like a fellow that was too clever for all the others, don't I? If that's not a triumph of practical business, what is? Is this England or is it a madhouse? Do you expect to save the country, Mr. Mangan? Well, who else will be? Your Mr. Randall save it. Randall the Rotter? Certainly not. Will your brother-in-law save it with his moustache and his fine talk? Yes, if they will let me. Ah, um, will they let you? No. <laughs> they prefer you. Very well, then. As you're in a world where I'm appreciated and you're not, you'd best be civil to me, haven't you? Who else is there but me?